How many of you in this room have ever experienced the absolute total humiliation of playing a video game against the child? Why does the child always win? Is it because they're faster? Is it because they're smarter? Is it because they're stronger? No, it's because they played this game before. As a result, they have the secret to success. They know the road ahead. And if you know the road ahead, you have an incredible power called anticipation. Anticipation is the ultimate advantage. See, winners, leaders anticipate, losers react. The reason you get beat is you don't know where things are happening, so you're reacting. Reaction is always stressful. And yet so much of our life is predictable if we just were to study it, not be caught up in our day to day. And if you were to anticipate these things and put a strategy in place, you could take it all out and have the quality of life that you deserve. This right here is the absolute reason why I don't play video games with my son. All right, me, I'm the, I'm of the belief that I have to beat my kids in everything. Because if I let them win, then they're going to think they know everything. They can win one little game, and then everything you ever told them, they think they're in charge from here on out. But I remember my oldest son. Like Me, when I played, I played Madden back in, you know, the 90s, showing my age here. And then one day, I'm coming back. I believe it was from Iraq. And then uh, my oldest son, like, Daddy, let's play football. I'm like, all right, I I done played Madden before, but this is like 2000 and 2008, you know, 2009. So I ain't got the skills that I had. My son was like seven or eight. <laughs> and then, um, so we play. He beat me like 100 to zero. I don't have no clue. And he just looked at me like, man, you suck. You said you play football, everything. So you see, like to kids, you know, you're, you're their idol until they start beating you. Then they think they know everything. But the thing is, it's, it's really a life metaphor is the reason why, like Tony Robbins said, the reason why they beat you because they play that game. You know, they got time on task with that game. You just coming out of nowhere and trying to figure it out. But translating that to the financial world, you see it all the time. Alex, I know you see it also. Like you have the friends and family members that don't know anything about real estate, don't know anything about the stock market. And then you try to educate them and then they're wondering how are you succeeding when they're, they're doing it, when they're, when they halfway doing what you said, and then they wonder how you see that and they're not. It's the reason is you have time on task. You know, it's about time in the market instead of timing the market because everybody else just want to time the market thinking it's a lottery ticket. You know, it's time in the market. Just keep putting your capital work, keep putting your tap capital work. Other people just looking for an instant return because you went through the cycles and you understand what's going on. Just like in real estate. I mean, in 2022 and uh, 2021 and 2020, I mean, I've had, you know, friends and things talking about buying a house. And I said, just when you buy it, make sure your plan is to stay in there for a long time. And they getting houses built and they looking at me crazy. Like, why would it, I want to, have to stay in there for a long time. I could stay in here for a couple of years and then flip it. Then I said, we're at historically low interest rates. And then, so interest rates have nothing to do but go up. As the interest rates go up, the value of the money go down. The value of the asset will go down a little bit. And the purchasing power of somebody you're going to sell it to is going to go down. And they looked at me crazy, looked at me crazy. And then now those same people, that some of the people that I know who bought in 2022, 2023, they're sitting underwater. They're sitting underwater. They want to sell the house. They they plan on flipping, buying, selling their house and buying another house. And the values is going down. People, people to that's available to buy their property. And I just explained it like this. I will ask them, let's say they paid four hundred thousand dollars for a house. And I'll ask them, what's your mortgage payment? And then they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm paying fourteen hundred dollars a month. And then they got two percent, two point three percent, something like that. And then I and then I ask them, and then so I said, "Do you know anybody that has eighty thousand dollars just sitting in a bank account?" And then they said, "Nobody." And I said, "Well, if somebody put a twenty percent down payment, that's what they got to have to buy the house." And I said, "Forget the twenty percent down payment." I said, "Would you would you live in this house if you had to pay thirty six hundred dollars a month?" And they'd be like, "Heck no! Are you crazy?" And I said that whoever buys that buys this house from you, 
That's how much they have to pay them up. And then they sit there and look crazy. And then they'll be like, well, yeah, you said that. Uh, yeah, it's because I understand the game because I've had more time on task. I'm not saying it to alleviate or change what you're trying to do. It's just about, hey, this game has been played before. Study history, because if you don't study history, it's bound to repeat. Everybody thought that this financial wave in a housing market would be something like the financial crisis. I mean, we've been on here talking ad nauseum. It's not like the financial crisis. It's like the 1980s. Interest rates are going to go up. Housing prices are going to stay stagnant or go down a little bit. And the people's purchasing power is not going to be where it was at when the interest rates was low. So you're not going to get that same effect of buying it and being able to flip it and then getting into a house with the lower payment or you having more down because the interest rates now are at 8%. And that's how the people that's been in the game for a long time is winning at this game is because they have time on tabs. And the new people that's coming in, the new syndicators, the new quote unquote investors, the new flippers, they're getting screwed over and ran over because they don't know how to play the game. They didn't understand the game that they was playing. They looked at a couple of YouTube videos, a couple of YouTube shorts, some stuff on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever. And then they thought they had the game understood. You have to you have to get knowledge from people that have lived the life, people that's been in the game for a while. And that's how you obtain success. Like me, I always tell you um, and I tell here people here, I go get information from people that's done it before. I don't try to recreate a new blueprint. I follow a blueprint of somebody in an arena that I'm going to, going in. I follow a blueprint of somebody that's already been successful in that arena. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, recreate the wheel, because I know those people have been through economic cycles. They know what they're doing. And that's what people should go on. But Alex, how do you feel about this video and what's your insight on it? Yeah, I like what he said. I like how he made the point that people... You know, the child has played the game before. That's why they're winning. And it, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but when, you know, it's it's interesting when people will try and talk to you about finance or give you advice and they're losing at the game. And they wouldn't want to take our advice or what we say or, Put any value to it because we don't you know well for me at least i don't have a degree or anything but we say this a lot is we judge people by their actions not by their words and so just look at the person's actions what have they accomplished and that's something that people should be paying attention to more so than not is what actions have they accomplished and this is something i looked at before even really learning about finance is when I started learning from people about finance, what I did was looked at what they had in their life that differentiated them from other people, you know, whether it be from my first boss that I had that I've mentioned about before, who, you know, he wasn't a multimillionaire or nothing, but he had very little debt. His house was almost paid off. I had never heard of anyone that had an almost paid off house. His cars were paid off. He had a built up 401k. He had savings. Like I, I hadn't heard of people like that. And then it was meeting mm-hmm. him and then meeting people like you. And so it was always looking at their actions. Like when I was, when I had met you, Kirby, um, and you had given me advice and told me things I should do. I remember thinking to myself, this isn't something I would do but I'm just going to do it blindly because I trust this guy who has built this in his life because I didn't trust myself. I didn't know anything. And so just doing and just following those actions blindly to many would seem like a huge risk that they weren't willing to take, but I was willing to take it because I knew that you had played the game before and I had no idea what the game was. And so that's something that I think people need to be more aware of at least so that was the uh the highlight of the video for me was when he mentioned that and of course you know especially we always talk about not knowing or not being in control of situation causes stress 
So when people, you know, losers react, how he said, you know, they're reacting because they don't know how to handle the situation and winners anticipate they're seeing the issue ahead of time and they're preparing for that issue. And that's that's really all what it's about. Well, and you you brought up a good point. It's and that's and that's he is like you seen what was going on and you followed it. Most people and for people that's out there that don't know, so Alex he was just you know a saver, 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 saver. That was he was doing better than ninety percent of the people on Earth already. And then, like when you said, people say, oh, that, that's a risk that I'm not willing to take. Most people have zero already. So the risk you're willing to take is staying at zero. That's really, that's really the only risk that they're taking. But they look at that as a risk. So I let's say I do what this guy said that's successful at it, and I'm broke. Well, you was broke already. I don't know. You lied to yourself because you got a job. You're still broke. You're at the end of the month, your account still says zero. So you're broke. I mean, the things that the thing that I, I remember telling you, you know, is stuff that I've done. I will never repeat something that or say, do this when I haven't done it. And then that's why I always harp on that. I mean, you got the you I mean, I I seen a guy on uh YouTube, I was looking at a video. The guy, he uh he's talking about the housing market, he's talking about um uh, about renters and landlords and all this. And he's literally in his mom's basement creating this content. He, don't, he ain't even rented a house yet before, but he's telling all the nuances about real estate. And he has millions. I mean, well, he got about 750,000 followers. And I'm looking like, and people, you know, people follow him believing that, I mean, his videos look good and all that. So people think he knows what he's talking about, but he's never had real time on task. Now, He's good at looking at the numbers and all that other stuff and showing the numbers and all that, but he's never been through it. He don't really know what a landlord is going through. He can surmise because he's never been through it. I mean, he, he has a couple of good talking points, but they haven't done it. And you said it best when you said people people look at titles. People look at titles and think like, oh, that's that's good. Like the one, you know, for me, the real estate agent. Real estate agent, you know, a little, a little test. These people, and there's nothing wrong with being a high school graduate. Alex, a high school graduate, and very successful. But most of these people, they do it as a side gig, and then people will look at it and say, "Oh, that's a real estate agent. You know everything about real estate." Getting your real estate license don't teach you about cap rate and teach you about ROI and teach you about all the things and the nuances about a house. They'll tell you the price per square foot, which that don't mean nothing. They'll tell you, hey, this house sold for this price over here. Oh, so that's the value of the house. They don't know the in-depth of, you know, home inspections. They don't know, uh, you know, most of them don't even know the 1% rule. So putting your blind faith in a real estate agent because they have a title and not putting your faith in somebody that's actually doing it, actually have units, actually manage properties, actually deal with tenants. That is the thing that amazes me the most. And I get it all the time. I mean, some of the biggest, uh, some of the biggest mortgage brokers in the world, they call me and try to tell me stuff that's insane. Like, oh, the interest rate don't matter. When you're just on a, on a, on a place saying, oh, the interest rate don't matter of how much you pay per month. Oh, yeah, the hell they do. And then it's funny, I got a call, uh, and I'll wrap this video up. I got a call like a week ago, and a lady from one of these big mortgage brokers, you see them on TV, I'm not going to say their name. They tried to convince me that refi in out of a 3% to go to an 8% made financial sense. And then so I just, and I told him, I said, you know, I do this. I know you're just looking at one property that I have with you, but I have lots of them. And then the conversation totally changed. They start telling me about their personal finance and how they don't know how this stuff works and this, and they're just following the script. And they just going, they just rambling on. Got a YouTube subscriber out of them also because I was just, you know, telling them and then, it's just amazing that the same people that's calling these every average everyday Joes that don't know nothing, they believe these people have they have the cheat code or they know what they're talking about. They're human just like you. They don't study just like you. They don't have a clue of what's going on. And then they trap people and making them and convincing them that it makes sense to get out of a 3% mortgage to refi 
to an eight percent. It's the craziest thing on earth. But I'll cut it short there, Alex. You got anything? To close it out. I would just close it out there, guys. With all that being said, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and then we'll see you guys on the next one.